Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're joined again with Nicole from Seas Park Pass and we're here for the first day of food and wine at Busch Gardens Tampa Bay for the 2023 season. I'm so excited. The food looks so good. Are you it ready really to does. eat a little bit of everything? I have a whole list so I think I am ready to go but we have to go get our lanyards and then it's off to eating. So let's do it. Let's do it. We are officially walking in to Busch Gardens Food and Wine Festival area. It is officially noon, and we are ready to get our eat on. We have our sample lanyard this year for food and wine. As you can tell, it's got food and wine and Viva La Musica, because that will be here later. But we've made it. Welcome to our gourmet gardens. Over here at booth number one, this is the Wines of the Americas. That's a little look at what they have here at Station One. At booth three, we have Sweeney Woodworks, which is where you can meet an artist. And they also have a bunch of her artwork here in the building. And it looks very good. Over here at booth number two, we have Vegetable Samosa with Pepidou Tomato Chutney and we have an African vegetable curry with naan bread. I think we're gonna go with the number one option right here, the vegetable samosa. This right here is the vegetable samosa with the tomato sauce, and it looks delicious. I can't wait to dig in and give you my opinion on how this tastes. All right guys, we're gonna go with our, woo, our first bite of the vegetable samosa with the tomato dipping sauce. That is really, really good. I have to look at the inside. I don't know if y'all can see that. But the flavor of that, ooh, this is a really good option. Okay, so right here, ooh, no, I just dropped it. Uh, this right here is the vegetable curry with the naan bread. Nicole got this one with her item lanyard, so I don't want to take any responsibility for that. But I got this one, so we're gonna try it. It's decent. I like it. Personally, not my like forte, but it's still really good. We just got done trying the options from booth number two, the trek through Africa, and this is our review on them. Personally, the samosas, I liked those a lot. I'd probably give it a solid seven out of ten. Those were really good. It was a great first option here at Food and Wine. An eight. An eight. So we have pretty similar. The tomato chutney was really good and just a little bit spicy, so it added a lot of flavor. Oh, so yeah. definitely an eight for me. Definitely really good. And then the vegetable curry for me, as I was saying, it wasn't really my forte, but it was still really good. So I'm gonna give it a solid six out of ten. That's I, not because I didn't like it, but it's just because it, it, it was still really good, like the creamy. Six. Also go with the six. Six. Creamy. It was delicious. Really good flavor, but I think it needed just a hair more spice. I do agree with that. Yeah. A continuation of Booth 3 brings us over here to some food and wine merch. We have a Busch Gardens Food and Wine Cozy right here. Looks like it will run you $39.99 before tax. But it's super cute. We also have this clear Busch Gardens Food and Wine Festival glass. I'm not seeing any price on the bottom of this. But I'll check to see if there's any other prices on the other. But... And right over here, we have this glass Busch Gardens Food and Wine Festival cup. This one right here is gonna run you $24.99. But it's got like the same design as the little cozy. So I think they're really cute. Right over here we have a food and wine corkscrew and bottle opener. It looks like a little bottle. How cute is that? This looks like it's gonna run you $12.99. So Callan over here at booth number four, he got the Serengeti Flyer Punch. So this is a new option this year. Looks like it's got Blanco Tequila, Bacardi Coconut Rum, Melon Liquor, and Mojito Mix. Let's give it a try. Let's see how it is. Oh, that's so good. That's really, really good. I really, really like that. I like that it's got both tequila and Bacardi Rum in it. And this has like the melon flavor. It's kind of like pineapple-ish. It's really, really good. Over here at booth number six, we got Twisted Egg Rolls. 
the options they have here are buffalo chicken egg roll and the Philly cheesesteak egg roll. We're going with the buffalo chicken just because buffalo chicken is really, really good. We got our buffalo chicken egg roll right here. I, you can't really tell because it's so bright, but we got some ranch on the side too. We're gonna try this out. Look at that. All right, here we go, first bite. I think we have a winner. Yeah. Wow. That just might be a 10 out of 10. So that is, that is really, really good. Right here, courtesy of Nicole once again, we've got the Philly cheesesteak egg roll. I'm gonna get this one a bite. It also comes with spicy ketchup versus the ranch dressing that we had on the last one. So we'll see how it works. Mm. That one's good. Not as good as the buffalo chicken one, but still really, really good. I do feel the spice of the spicy ketchup though. We just got done trying the egg rolls from Twisted Egg Roll. They were both really, really good. That is a stand that if you guys are gonna come here, you guys have to visit. But my review, the buffalo chicken egg roll, solid time time. That one was delicious. And like the ranch dressing and the, yeah, amazing. The Philly cheesesteak egg roll was a little bit, not as great in my opinion but I think maybe it's just because of the spicy ketchup. Um, but I feel like the buffalo chicken had more flavor. The Philly cheesesteak one, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Philly cheesesteak to begin with, so I'm gonna give it a solid 9.5 out of 10 though, because it's still really, really good. How about you? I liked them both. Um, I'm gonna throw probably a nine at both of them. Yeah, they were both fantastic. I, I'm like him, I'm kind of like on the fence about the spicy ketchup. I think the egg roll by itself without the ketchup was better. Mm -hmm. um, but the buffalo definitely with the ranch was a great mix. So we'll give that a 9.25. That's all. Yeah. All right, we are now over here at market number seven. We got Moroccan Market. They here have a very, very spiced chicken babble. I'm probably butchering that. And then they have a Moroccan couscous with roasted vegetables. We're gonna go with the top one, so let's do it. Right here we have the Berbere spiced chicken babble. And it looks really, really good. I cannot wait to try this one. Like, I keep saying that I can't wait to try them, but this one is especially one that's appealing to the eye. Now we got live music while we're eating our food, which is really cool because like live music just adds to the atmosphere of food and wine. But let's go ahead and try this spiced chicken nabu, or however you pronounce it. Mm. This is really, really good. Look at that. All right, let's go in for a bite. Wow. This is delicious. I just got done trying the Berry Berry Spiced Chicken Babbit. I still don't know how to pronounce it. If you guys know how to, please let me know down in the comments below. But that was really good. I'm a huge fiend for chicken. As you can tell, Buffalo Chicken was my favorite at the last one. And this right here is another favorite of mine. Definitely tasted very good with the bread. I think the bread enhanced the flavor just a little bit. Um, but it tasted like really good, like rotisserie chicken almost. So I give that a solid 9.5 out of 10. As you can tell, all these offerings that we have today are really hitting up high numbers. It was a 10 out of 10. Point of hurry, it was a 10 out of 10, so. And the couscous, eh, kind of mid, six. Oh yeah, she tried the couscous. It was okay. I was um, not about to try that. Missing flavor a little bit, but I did like the root vegetables. Solid. Well, there's our review. We are now over here at station number eight, the Greek Isles. Over here they got stuffed grape leaves with 
tzatziki, tzatziki sauce, lamb lollipop with a mini demi glaze, and baklava. We're gonna go with the lamb lollipop because that looks really good. And then I think Nicole's gonna get the baklava for dessert. No, I'm not. No? I hate baklava. Sorry. I can't live without my baklava. He's gonna get the baklava. <laughs> So right here guys, we have the lamb lollipops. It looks like you could literally just take it by the bone and just eat it off of it like that. But this looks really good and I cannot wait to try it. All right, here goes our first bite of the lamb lollipops with the mint demi-glaze. Oh wow. That is pretty good. I have to eat more. Pretty solid. So we just got done trying the lamb lollipops. Those were really good. I don't think I've ever had lamb before, so it was a definitely new taste to me. That was delicious. The mint demi-glaze, I, I was a fan of, I don't know if it hindered out the taste in my opinion, but it was still really good nonetheless. I think I'm gonna rate that a good solid 7.5, 8 out of 10, because it was really good. But, I mean, Demi Glaze just threw it off just slightly for me. Over here at booth number nine, they have desserts and sweet wines. So these are all the different drinks they have over here. And the prices, if you guys are interested. Now I'll be right over here. It looks like at the mango stand. Over here at booth number 10, we got three options. We got pierogies and peas, which if you remember, we had the pierogies from Beer Fest last year. They got mushroom ravioli with truffle cream sauce. And they got tiramisu. And I think it's time for dessert. So we're gonna go with the tiramisu. Here is a look at the tiramisu. It looks delicious. And I love myself a dessert, so we're gonna dig right into it right now. All right guys, right here we have the tiramisu. I love myself a good dessert, so let's dig right in. Bon appetit. This wins. 10 out of 10, no questions asked, this wins. All right, so, for the tiramisu, like I said, it's a 10 out of 10. No questions asked. Nicole said she didn't really like it that much because she doesn't like coffee. Well, that's her opinion. My opinion is we're watching meat, right? You know? I think it's a 10 out of 10. I love the tiramisu. All right, so these here are new. Um, they are living portraits, so that is live plants growing oh. to create these meat designs. That's really cool. Over here at booth number 11, we got a peach crumble and vanilla ice cream and macaroons. Obviously, you gotta go with the peach crumble. If you had a macaroon before, you know what they taste like. I love this cute little design that they put up here with like the little ice cream cones. That's super sweet. We have the peach crumble with the vanilla ice cream, and as you can tell, it's already starting to melt. So if you get this item, you gotta eat this fast. So let's go and eat it right now. So here we go with the vanilla ice cream and peach crumble. Look at that. It's incredible. Looks delicious. That someone so unforgettable. Oh, wow. They I am. That is amazing. Oh no. I got ice cream on my pants. But this right here is amazing. This This might be better than the tiramisu, honestly. It tastes just like my grandma's peach cobbler. I just got done eating the peach cobbler. Wow, that was delicious. I think another 10 out of 10 dessert here at Food & Wine. Tasted just like grandma's home cooking and that brought me back to a good place. So obviously I do have to go with a 10 out of 10 on the peach cobbler. The ice cream on top of it tasted phenomenal as well. All in all, 10 out of 10. We have now made it over to book number 12, which is Asian inspired. They got a spicy pork belly with mandarin orange soy glaze. And then they have a teriyaki salmon with coconut scallion rice. I think we're gonna go with the spicy pork belly. 
Let's see how it is. That will never so be. That clearly, will never be. I was thinking food before video, but this is what we have left of the um, pork. It was really, it was really good. What did you give it? I'd say a seven out of ten. The crust is really really crispy, and like the meat part is a little bit dry. All the flavor is there. I just think it might be a tad overcooked. I definitely thought it was pretty good. I'm on the same like about seven out of ten. Um, the skin, like she said, being crispy, I don't know if it was supposed to be like that, but it was decent nonetheless. I liked it, but it's a good solid 7 out of 10. Over here at Station 15 is the Cupcake Corner, like it is for every event. But today, we have new ones. We have an Iron Gwazi, a Shikra, a Cheetah, and a Tigress one. We have this really beautiful photo op right over here that says Bush Gardens Food and Wine Festival. I love the design of it. We are now over here at Latin Twist, number 18. We got three options. We got chimichurri, beef skewer, the mojo pork taco, and the pina colada trifle. We're going with the pina colada trifle because I love dessert so much. Over here at the Coke Canopy, they have some shows that will go on during the day. Right now, it looks like we got a violinist up on stage playing some nice, charming music to add a touch to the Food and Wine Festival vibe here at Bush Gardens Tampa. So right now we are actually walking over to Pantopia Theater to go catch a new show called Rescue Tales. We're taking a little break from the food because I need my stomach to settle just a little bit. As I, I say that as I have a whole thing of food in my hand. But <laughs> he's got the drinks. Anyways, we're heading over to Rescue Tales to catch a show, get some AC, and you know, kind of just relax for a bit. But we'll be back over to the Food and Wine Festival grounds in just a little bit. Something fun on this map is they finally added Serengeti Flyer. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out because we had a really great time. We are now over here at Pantopia Theater over in the Pantopia section of the park for a showing of Rescue Tales. This show, you can see amazing animals and hear inspiring stories of rescues in this fun and educational presentation. If you guys listen closely, You guys recognize that? It's Zelda. Zelda! <laughs> this is Pocket, our Virginia opossum. This was originally an East Coast animal, but they spread all across the United States. 
while the railroad tracks being built. In fact, they're brought state to state as a food source. But well, we came across Pocket here because one night a lady was driving home and she saw a cute little furball run across the road. And she had tried her best to stop, but she had accidentally hit that furball. So she got out of her car and saw that she had hit an opossum. However, though, this lady was really, really smart. She had done her research and she remembered reading somewhere that opossums are marsupial. And we know marsupials are an animal with a pouch, but what do they keep in that pouch? What do they keep in that pouch? There we go. So she got down real low. She bravely opened up that pouch and what she found was five beautiful opossums. One of them being Pocket here. So this, this is Giggles and he is the laughing kookaburra. Now this bird here is truly famous for his voice. So they use the kookaburra's call in the background of every single movie that's ever had a jungle scene ever. It doesn't matter if they're showing an African, a South American, or an Asian jungle. They still use the kookaburra's call, even though he's from the exact opposite climate. He's from the grasslands of Australia, but they use that voice of his because it does sound like it comes from the jungle. Do you guys want to hear it? Are right, you ready, buddy? <laughs> this is Wizard, our turkey vulture, and I gotta tell you, I absolutely love his big, beautiful, bald head, but in 10 years, I really hope I don't look like him. Now, what this bird does is he wakes up every single morning and he spreads his wings out nice and wide. He starts to take up that sun, and once he gets nice and warm, he takes flight in the sky and he starts getting to work. He starts sniffing for the dirtiest, most rotten, disgusting thing he can find. And once he finds something so gross and rotten, he's gonna dive on down and he's gonna make a meal out of it. Now I know what we're thinking, it's pretty gross, right? He eats dead things, but if we're being honest ourselves, we all eat dead things. Nobody finds a cow to chase it down the road and chew on its leg. Now this, this is Boris and he is the South American porcupine, otherwise known as the Quindu. Now, you guys have all heard about how porcupines shoot their quills, right? So what we're gonna do is on the count of three, we're gonna clap one time really loudly. When we clap, he's gonna shoot 10 to 20 quills towards the audience. So you guys in the first three rows, cover your eyes. Ready? One, two, three. It didn't work. Let's try one more time. Ready? One, two, three. It's not working. Do you know why it's not working? Because porcupines don't shoot their quills. Those quills are just hair. It's hair that's sharp and stiff and pokey. And when an animal touches them, that's when those needles are left behind. It's not like they're spring loaded and you can say, fire missile six and shoot them out. But even though porcupines can't shoot their quills, they are amazing creatures. In fact, porcupines make up a lot of the world's largest rodents. And, and this is Disco, our gray fox. And he was found abandoned as a pup by a rehab center. And they took him in with every intention of re-releasing him back out in the wild. But unfortunately, they chose the wrong rehab to the job. And she took him home and did everything wrong. You see, she loved on him, she cuddled on him, she let him play with the dogs, watch TV with the kids. So by the time she had brought him back, they had seen that she had completely ruined him. He totally lost his healthy fear and respect to people. So they sent him on over to us about 15 years ago. Now gray foxes in the wild, they only live six to eight years. Disco here is 16 years old. This is Ibu, and what is he? Who? 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 I'm kidding, that's my only owl joke. You guys are absolutely right. He is an owl. You were looking at the barred owl. And Ibu here, he came to our center because he was flying free about 13 years ago when he made a big mistake and accidentally flew down in front of a car. The person they can stop and they hit this poor bird, shattering his left wing. But they very bravely scooped him up and took him to a special wildlife vet that saved his life. But unfortunately, 
They couldn't save that left wing of his. So he's completely lost the ability to fly, which is why he's with us at our center. But owls are perfectly set up to fly and hunt tonight, though. Some things that help them. Number one of those eyes. Their eyes are so good at seeing at night that if we turned off all the lights in here, if we made it so dark in this room that you couldn't even see your own hand just without light, and we took one little candle with one candle of light in the middle of a big room like this, this owl could see everything about as well as we see right now. This is Pepe, and what is he? That's right, but he's not just any skunk. He's a striped skunk, and you can tell by these beautiful racing stripes going down his back. Now there's also a spotted skunk that lives right here in Florida, as well as a hog-nosed skunk that's got a nose kind of like a pig. But the one thing all these skunks have in common is that spray. Have you guys heard of the spray before? Well, I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm just kidding, don't you guys worry. That one will be for the end of my career, and it's definitely gonna happen at a junior high school. Now, skunks here, they don't have the fastest feet. He doesn't have the sharpest claws or the strongest bite. So all he's got to defend himself out there with is that spray. Now this, this is Homie, and she is the Kinkajou. Can you guys say Kinkajou? Bless you. Now, the Kinkajous, they're from the South American rainforest, and they are definitely a nocturnal or a nighttime animal. They eat up at night, and they're looking for two things. They're looking for fruit, which they eat, and they're looking for flowers. Now the flowers, they do something very special with. They go from flower to flower all night long, sticking their nose down to the flower to get to the nectar. See, inside of their mouth, they have a four inch long tongue. And they'll use that four inch long tongue of theirs to slurp up that nectar. And as they go from flower to flower all night long, they're doing a super important job. They're cross-pollinating. They can All right, and this gorgeous gal is Tico, our Harris hawk. And these are one of the rare birds that hunt in packs. And they do this because they come from harsh environments where their food sources are very scarce. And the only way they can survive is by working together. Now we got Tico here from the Colson program, which is a program designed to take Harris hawks like herself breed them, pair them together, then re-release them back out to the eastern parts of Texas where their populations have been almost completely devastated by hurricanes. Azul, this, this is my favorite animal. I trust him, he trusts me. I know he wants to be with me. You have to know the wild animals belong in nature where they're truly supposed to be. Now, I like to end each one of our presentations with just a few easy things that we are able to do to help protect our wild friends. Things like reducing single-use plastics and recycling, or picking up garbage and keeping the environments clean. Or if you find a sick or injured animal in the wild, get it to a wildlife rescue center. There are literally thousands of places to help give the animals the proper care they need to hopefully get them back out to the wild. And if there's anything that you guys care about, whether it's people, plants, animals, or the planet itself, get out there and do something about it. If everybody plays their part just a little bit, we can make the world an even more amazing place to live. You guys have already done a lot by supporting the park here today, but I want to thank you for being a very fun audience and enjoy the rest of your day here at Bush Gardens, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. So we just got done with the Rescue Tales show here at the Pantopia Theater. That was really cute. They brought out a lot of animals, gave some fun educational facts about them. And at the very end, we got to see a wiener dog. And I think that was, uh... You guys won't believe... Basil, I think that's his name? Basil. The ween. He was so nice, and I waved at him and giggled the entire time. It was amazing. But yeah, Rescue Tales is a show that you guys definitely have to check out when you guys come to Bush Gardens, because it's a really cute show. Plus, it gets you out of the heat. So, make sure to check out Rescue Tales next time you visit. You got the spotlight, Mother. buddy. Show it off. Yes, sir. Pedal's looking real nice. Oh, yeah. You're looking amazing today. Okay, now you're just showing off. <laughs> you are the bestest. Oh, Ooh, perfect. look at that pose. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, high five. Three man. Three man. <laughs> Okay, so who did we just meet? Oh, it was 
the Bush Bush. I think it has a name. Mm -hmm. I think it, like they call it like divine or something. I don't know. It might be. I'm just in awe of how beautiful they made food and wine this year. They got like these flowers right here at each of the booths. They've got like kind of like little like fruits, like blueberries. I believe there's like oranges down there, mangoes. And then some of those buildings have like uh, vines on them. They've got vines over here. It's just super pretty this year. The um, design job, the people who did it this year did an amazing job. So earlier, you know how we saw the violinist over here, or the cellist? She comes here at 12.30, 2, 3.30, and 5. So if you guys want to catch a performance, those are your times where you can see Rose Molare, is that how you pronounce it? I'd say so. That, you can come see her at those four times. Over here we have another photo op of Bush Gardens Food and Wine. This one is super pretty as well. So right here we have the watermelon salad. It comes with feta cheese, lettuce, watermelon, and I think there's like what, an arugula sauce? A yeah, it's arugula is the lettuce and then there's some sort of a sauce on it. Gotcha, gotcha. And then over here we've got the surf and turf. Both look like very interesting options. I'm not a huge fan of feta. I'm not a huge fan of lobster, so it should be interesting. But we're gonna try it. Alright, here goes the first bite of the watermelon salad. Rude. It's pretty decent. Definitely like the watermelon. The watermelon's really good. This is delicious. Yeah. Yes, I would actually pay for that. That's very good. The lobster has like a kind of a buttery. It's a very rich buttery flavor to it. And then the beef is like super tender, really good. Over here in this area, the bird gardens, last year we had the like human statue, but this year they switched it up a little bit. Now they have this thing called the courtyard gallery. As you can see, we got a bunch of paintings back there. So let's go check them out. Right over here, it looks like we got a tiger. And then it says Zulu Painter 21. So I guess that's the person who makes these. But we have a really pretty tiger. As we keep walking, we've got penguins, we've got a lion over here, we've got, I do not know what that is, some sort of animal over there, we've got some zebra stuff going on right over here, and over there we have some elephants. These are cute little photo ops that you can get when you come to Food and Wine. I love it. Very vibrant, very quaint and very pretty. One thing that I love about this area right now, they have these like little like poles and what they wrap them with is like this like little like food and wine design with like all these swirls and they got like the lights going across so at night I guarantee you this area looks absolutely phenomenal. And then of course you've got this amazing decoration over here paired with all the fun like food stands all around here. So right over here next to Spring's Tap Room, they do have this like little hidden gem here. It's a wine like tasting uh, room, and they have the full menu right here when you come in. Old world wines, flights, and snacks. So right here they have like the little map of the food and wine booths and everything. This is on my phone, so you guys can look it up on the Bush Gardens website. But it shows you where all the booths are, and then there's some booths specifically with like that little blue tag. Oops, you can't really see it. That little blue tag right there, like 1 in 14. With that blue tag, that's where you can purchase the sample lanyard. But you can also purchase it over at Guest Relations, which is what we did this morning. So, when you guys come, those are your options where you can buy a pass. Well, that's going to wrap up our day here at Bush Gardens Food and Wine. Definitely not leaving hungry. I'll say that for sure. It was a great day. Well, guys, that's going to do it from us here at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay for the opening day of food and wine. I think it was a really awesome day. We had so many great food options this year, and I think some of my favorites were definitely the peach cobbler, the tiramisu, as you can see, desserts. Um, I also liked the the chicken bear boat, or how do you pronounce really that? Good. That was really good. How about you? What are your uh, favorites? I love the surf and turf. I was surprised, and 
think what was the other one I really liked? Oh, the mushroom ravioli was really good. Yeah. Yeah. All in all, most of the offerings that we had this year, we rated them like 9, 10. So they're really solid this year. If you guys, solid menu. If you guys can get out this year, you guys definitely have to check it out. It's going on until May 21st, I believe, May 21st, right? yep. So you guys have more than enough time to come out here. Plus on the weekends, they got some concerts coming. We got some headliners like Maddie and Tay. Kansas is this Justin weekend. Lynch. They have really good headliners, so make sure to make a stop out here at Bush Gardens Tampa Bay for food and wine in the future. See With that soon. being said, we'll hope to see you real soon.